Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Axelon here from Enthusiast.com, bringing you yet another review of another Let's Play I've recently completed. Today, we'll be doing, as is obvious by the title of the video you clicked on, Dawn of War Winter Assault. Winter Assault is a real-time strategy title set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe and is the first expansion pack to 2004's Dawn of War. This review will not be covering the multiplayer components of the game because, well, I didn't play multiplayer. So there, take that. Anyway, the story of the game is fairly simple. The Imperial Guard are tasked to retake a planet being held by the ruinous powers of chaos in order to reclaim an Imperial Titan, which is basically, it's a giant mecha shaped like a cathedral. And in the meantime, they also have to deal with the Chaos Forces and a rising Orc Wah, which is like a, basically a horde. And the Eldar have seen fit to insert themselves into the picture to prevent the awakening of the hidden Necrons, which are basically a big army of evil, highly advanced robots beneath the surface who eons ago were the scourge of the galaxy. Are you confused yet? I hope not, because otherwise later expansions will really start confusing you. Anyway, uh, from the very start of the game, you have two options. You have Order, represented by the Imperial Guard and Eldar, and Disorder, which is represented by the Orcs and Chaos. I mean, go figure, Chaos and Disorder. Anyway, each campaign consists of six missions among the two factions of the side you chose, and they occasionally alternate between each faction mid-mission. During the fourth mission, you as the player will make a choice that, that determines the course of the following two missions as alliances forged in desperation unravel as the end game approaches and nobody trusts anybody besides themselves. Gameplay-wise, this choice doesn't alter too much as it's essentially the same mission, but slightly altered as you choose which faction you want to play as as all forces converge and fight over the buried Titan, and then the Necrons drop in and slowly start trying to kill everyone. Perhaps my favorite thing about the campaign is that the factions each feel kind of like how that faction would fight in a war. So, for instance, the Imperial Guard focuses on massive land invasions or holding a, a huge defensive position with lots of infantry and mechanized warfare. Whereas, uh, when you play as the Eldar, they will generally tend to prefer, uh, in their mission objectives, surgical strikes and mobility aimed at accomplishing specific objectives. And on the other side of the coin, you have Chaos, which is a mix of outright total domination warfare or capturing enemy soldiers and then sacrificing them on a bloody altar to summon demons and corrupt your way to victory. Or you could just play as the orcs, and they're just there to have a good time. Uh, aside from the orcs feeling a bit limited, which is a problem the next expansion corrects to great effect, I found this to be a great little way to incorporate the flavor of each faction into you know each faction's kind of game plan. Plus, the orcs have Gorguts, which is honestly one of the best orc characters ever made, and his awesomeness compensates for the limited orc gameplay just a, a little bit. It doesn't make up for all of it, but Gorguts is awesome, and just, you'll, you'll love him. You'll love him. As an expansion, the game continues the resource system present in the original Dawn of War, which focuses on moving out and capturing resource points in order to build momentum to get more resources, to build bigger armies, to capture more resources, to get more momentum, and you get the picture. I mean, turtling is possible, and in the campaign is sometimes required, but be aware that it will take longer to do basically anything because you can only build so many troops at a time because of lack of resources. So, you know, offense is the best defense in Dawn of War. Overall, as a fan of 40k, I personally enjoyed Winter Assault. I preferred the original Dawn of War a bit more with the absolutely fantastic Blood Ravens. And I'd recommend the Dawn of War series for 40k fans. As an RTS, it's interesting, but it can feel a bit different from more traditional RTS setups like StarCraft, for instance, or even Command & Conquer. It might take a little getting used to with the way the resource system works. If you aren't a fan of 40k, 
or you just don't like real-time strategy games, I'd probably avoid it, if I'm going to be honest. Not because I think it's bad, just because it's probably not your cup of tea if you don't like 40k, and especially if you don't like RTS games. Like, I don't see this being the game that will change your mind. I could be wrong, so if you want to give it a shot based on my humble opinion, go for it. But there you have it. For in the grim dark future, there is only war. Thank <laughs> you.